your life, and this is talking about your character and conduct, because your interaction with people. So live your life in such a way that when you die, you will leave this world smiling and those around you will be crying at a loss. So live your life in such a way that when you leave the world, you will leave the world smiling and those around you will be crying at a loss. Moments ago I said some people when they die, people shake their heads and say that man should have gone five years ago. man. You know five years extra he got and he really disturbed the whole community. Is that us? Is that me? If it is, I need to change myself now. Change yourself, soften your heart, improve your character and conduct, that there is always room for improvement in that. So the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ explains absolutely everything. Do you want to know about how considerate one should be? That same hadith says that don't ever let those who work for you or don't ever give those who work for you a task that will be too difficult for them. I want you to carry these rocks and they are 100 kg rocks. Brother, you can't even carry 10 kgs. You want him to carry 100 kgs. He is a human being. The hadith says, لا تكلفوهم ما يغلبهم. Don't ever burden them with that which they cannot do. Never ever. And if you really have to, then you as a human, go and help them achieve that. So you tell the man, look, there are 25 crates that I want you to live from there to there, but the two of us will do it together. He will smile at you. He might even say, no, 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 never mind, I will do it. Go and help him. No matter what type of a suit you are wearing, go and help him. That is the Islamic character and conduct. Or you tell him, if you really cannot help, you tell him, look, we have 25 crates to move from here to there, but don't worry, we'll do it in the afternoon. I've asked another two people to come and help you. Now we are talking. Now this is a Muslim. Now we are considerate about those who work for us. Another narration speaking about those we deal with. Rahimallahum ri'in. Samhan idha ba'a. Samhan idha shtara. Allah has mercy on an individual who is considerate of the buyer when selling and considerate of the seller when buying. That's a beautiful hadith. To be considerate of the buyer when you are selling something. So you are selling, you bought it for 2,000 rupees. And you are selling it for 2,100, 2,200. You are considerate of the buyer. He is also having a good deal. He will make dua for you. He will go and use the item. And he will say, no, I had a good deal. And you made your profit as well. But if you are to rip him off, you bought it for 2,000, you are selling it for 20,000. And you are conning him because you started at 40,000 and pretended like you gave him a 50% discount. In that case, there will be curse and curse and no barakah and no blessings and no mercy. And there will be absolutely no goodness at all in that deal. Then, when you are buying, you need to be considerate of the seller. He has farad, he has compulsory obligations to look after his family and offspring. You know that this item here around it costs about 2,000 rupees and the purchase price is about 1,800, for example. And you are squeezing and squeezing as though it's a lemon until the end. You know, some people, they squeeze the lemon until they extract juice from even the peel. <laughs> so, you want him to give you at 1,810. Why? Are you only giving him 10? He is a person who really needs some form of income. Help him to do that. Allah will help you for all other things. Subhanallah. So there are so many points of consideration that we learn from this deen in every sphere of our lives. But we are so weak. We are so weak. Not only do we not know, but we just don't want to put it into practice. We sometimes we know. But we simply don't put it into practice. That is why today you find the Muslim Ummah is really looked at as the most downward people on earth by a lot. Because really sometimes we are guilty of portraying our own wrong image. You know, I'll be honest with you, I want to give you a true story. Some of you might have heard it on one of my CDs. I was once traveling from Malta to London. And Malta is a holiday resort, I'd like to think where mainly old couples go and they really nice, beautiful place and so on. Hazrat Sheikh Al-Hind was there, he was imprisoned there for a while during the colonial times. So, I entered the flight, I entered the plane, and in fact, prior to entering it, they just stopped, this was many years back, far before September 11. Far before September 11. They stopped me because they were shocked. They said, you are Zimbabwean, okay? I was with my father. Can we see your ID? They contacted immigration authorities in Harare to ask if this was genuine documentation. They knew us by name and they said, these are dignitaries here, please let them go. 
So anyway, they let us go. We were the last to enter the plane. Now, what happened is, we were seated separately, totally separately. And I happened to be seated next to an old European lady, Caucasian lady, old. When I sat there, I looked at her, I smiled, I nodded my head. I, I didn't know what to do actually, nodded my head. And I sat down and I noticed she moved herself as though she was tucking into the window. But that was not my business. Anyway, so as time passed, I noticed she was very edgy, very edgy. In fact, when they gave us forms to fill for landing, I stood up to take my bag. And I think everybody turned around to see what is this man doing. And innocently, I was completely innocent and I, you know, sat back there. I took out my Zimbabwean passport and began to fill. And the lady from the corner of her eye noticed that this is a Zimbabwean passport. And the man is writing English. So she built the courage. Obviously, my, the smile was already there. And I was really showing no difference. And she said, oh, you are from Zimbabwe. I said, yes. You speak English? Yes, I do. She said, oh, that's right, because I am also originally from Zimbabwe. I said, oh, that's great. Where from? We ended up talking and speaking such that I think the whole flight was now comfortable. They all started talking to each other. There was dead silence up to that moment. <laughs> and then what happened is, it so happened that her grandson was one of my best friends in school. And she was telling me, you know, I looked at you when you came in and I was thinking, who's this person, where is he from and what? I said, well, thank God we spoke to each other. Because now you found out that, you know, not everyone who looks like this is bad. No. The, idea, the reason why I'm mentioning this is to show you, even on her part, though she was frightened, but she had the decency to ask. And, alhamdulillah, something in me told me, you know, talk to her properly. Talk to her nicely. There was nothing, absolutely nothing to lose. Sometimes when we speak to others, people of authority, a little smile will break so many barriers, so many barriers. You arrive at immigration somewhere and you look at them so sternly, you throw your passport down, they will make sure they trouble you. <laughs> Just because of what you look like. But if you come in with a smile, hello, good morning, how are you? Yes, so on. They will ask you, how was your flight? I Believe me, I've tried it. How was your flight? You know, sometimes the police stops us just for a routine check. It happens here. I notice you have the same system we have. It happens here where the police stops you. Mostly when it happens to me, I ask them a few questions. They forget why they stopped me and they just let me pass. You know, sometimes a policeman, and I've done this, where he stops you and you look at him and you say, you know what? From your face, I can see you are a very good man, but if you put a smile on your face, I can imagine how, how good that face would look. And he suddenly breaks into a smile. With us, the people are good-hearted. You can joke with them like that. He smiles and he says, I say, hey, there you are. That's it. Look at how it's looking. Now the day is looking brighter. So what have I done? Completely talking to him on everything else. The day is looking brighter and he feels so happy. He says, where are you going to, sir? He says, no, I'm down the road or wherever you're going. Please have a safe journey. You're gone. Why? Character and conduct. Imagine you stop. Why did you stop me? Every time I'm passing here, you people are stopping me. You know? <laughs> They'll say, okay, that means now you can wait further. We'll deal with you after a while. <laughs> and I can give you one true example that occurred with me. One day, one day, I was stopped. And I, mostly, I don't carry a mobile phone. Or at that time, I didn't used to carry a mobile phone. So, what happened is, I was stopped and the policeman, he was looking for a bribe. To be honest with you, he was looking for a bribe. He tells me, why were you talking on your cell phone? Now, I don't even have a phone in the car. <laughs> I quickly thought, this was recently, not very long time ago. I quickly thought to myself, I said, officer, you are the man in charge. I am very, very sorry. I apologize and I plead for clemency. I'm really, really sorry. You know, sometimes people make mistakes. Now, what am I doing? I am literally lying to him as well. But... He realized that this man, you know, he was not talking on the phone. I'm just collecting. He started laughing because he knew that he was caught. He started laughing. He told me, no, just go, go. I told him, I'm so sorry. I won't do that again. You know, really, I, I was, it was my mistake. And he knows this man is making a fool of me, really. 
He started laughing. He was expecting me to say, I don't have a phone. Then he would say, are you debating with a police officer? Who do you think you are? Get off your vehicle. <laughs> you see, that was, he planned something, but we also plan. <laughs> so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really to open our doors of planning. Don't always talk. Think before you talk. Think before you talk, before you act.